everything. All right, guys, we are in part five of Make Personal Portfolio. Uh, some of this stuff we may have done in uh, part three, but we're going to kind of cover it in case uh, we uh, made a mistake. So last time we basically showed how to embed our code pin so you could see what's going on here. Now we have this p page four, which is just a background that we set up here, and we put in a... Um, a uh, uh, size we set the covering we added some padding now what we want to actually do is I guess to start we can go ahead and add a footer to here let me go ahead and pull up my notes on the side here we're going to go ahead and add a simple footer that's going to kind of mirror our um, our menu here we'll create a div this will be pretty straightforward let's create a div call the class equal to footer and within here we're going to create um, some LIs uh, actually you know what we can just do some anchor tags that'll work too so this will be our footer class and uh, I ended up just wrapping them all in an H3 to make them pop up a little bit because uh, we kind of oversized everything for this project. Because we, we had a one-page application, and we wanted things to be a little bit big. So we just add some anchor tags here, and uh, these are going to go wherever they're going to go. And uh, in my example, I actually um, I actually use uh, my name. So that remember how we have our name to the top left? And I link this to my, my personal website. I suggest that you link it to your portfolio. So we're just going to do something like so. My personal website is coding tutorials 360.com. And then, of course, uh, we want this to open up in a new page. So we're going to set target equal to blank. Now, just to put a little bit of space, I put a dash and then a space here. And because we're going to kind of replicate this format for everything else. So next for next up, I actually do my YouTube channel. So we're going to do a youtube.com slash coding tutorials 360. And then we're going to change this as well. We'll just go ahead and put uh, youtube.com slash coding tutorials 360. And uh, we're going to do this one more time, or actually three more times, except these are actually going to link to uh, various things. So instead of going to actual web pages, we're going to go ahead and have this next one link to our portfolio, which was uh, P3. Remember how we linked with the IDs that we set up earlier? Let's go ahead and change this. Put portfolio. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same for this, except the next one. that we need to do that right here sorry about that guys so we're gonna do hashtag p3 this links by id as i said a moment ago portfolio and then it wouldn't be complete if i misspelled things as i went along then we have our about me which ended up being hashtag p2 and uh about me and then finally, our next section was going to be contact me, which is the page we're on, which is hashtag P4. And let's go ahead and change that. Now, let's save it. Before we get started, I actually let's run it as well here. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit. You'll see these take a second to load. Don't sweat that, a lot of data is going in. So cool, so we have kind of our footer. It's not looking super great by, <laughs> by any means, but it's there. Um, you'll see it's on the bottom of the page. Now what we want to do next is, this, this is optional, but uh, I happen to like to do it. Um, we'll, we'll fix the styling in just a moment, so uh, don't freak out about that. Outside here, we're gonna add a P tag to make shit look official. And we're gonna go ahead and throw in, you know, the copyright. We're gonna hit them with that copyright, let them know that they ain't gonna be jacking our shit anytime soon. Let's go ahead and run that. And I believe that should come out white. Cool. Um, for some reason, it is inheriting. 
uh, some stuff there. So it shouldn't be that big. Let's see if I changed how I styled the P. I believe I might have. Cool. Uh, so where is P font size? Interesting, interesting. That is definitely not working as expected. So all we have to do here is we're going to say, look, if it's within the footer and it's a paragraph, we want to set the font dash size equal to, uh, let's say 15 PX. We're going to run that. Go down to the bottom, or better yet, we set this up. So let's go to um, contact me, jump down here. Cool, so that's there. Now, <laughs> what do we need to do next? So we have our footer. Now our footer class has a height here. Let's go ahead and gut this and see how it affects it. You'll see right there, now our footer is gonna uh, adjust automatically and our this is way too big we haven't added our buttons yet but let's go ahead and uh fix this hard set height instead we're just gonna add some padding so that was page four so we're gonna add some padding bottom and padding top of about five percent instead of this this height so let's go ahead and paste that in there run that scroll down so we still have this padding here, um, which is interesting because I didn't think that was supposed to be there. But let's actually go ahead and add our content and see if that fixes it so that we're not messing around with that too much. <laughs> now what we want to actually do is go ahead and just add some an H1 contact me. I'm going to pull up my section here. Cool. Um, what I the way that this is going to be styled is we're going to have from here about two thirds of this is going to say contact me and our email in big font and then on the side here taking up about one third third of the page it's got buttons going the way down. To do that we can go ahead and jump in here and we'll create a div and we're going to make this a little bit responsive so we're just going to throw in a row again the column grid system is based off divs and rows with 12, uh, 12 columns in a row. Now we're going to just do a div class is equal to uh, call dash md dash eight. And you know, you could add, definitely do a small, large, whatever you're going to do. And then we're going to have a div class equal to call, <coughs> call md dash four. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and throw an h1 in this eight section. And we're just going to put in contact me. I'm going to save that and let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see that things are going to look a little. Oh, so we seem to have an issue. So this is actually, is this getting displayed in the correct section? Something interesting is happening here. So let's continue on and see if we can fix it as we go. And then we have an anchor tag that's to the uh, right of it, which is still within the H1. We have a, oops, a href, and this is going to be contact me, close this, slash a, and then we're going to throw something in like, <laughs> what do we want to throw in? We want to throw in um, your email, and, uh, or you can do mail to and then your email, Dylan's email 310 at gmail.com. And then right here, we're going to actually put the text Dylan's email 310 at gmail.com. And it's just going to be styled slightly different. The color is going to be different. So people are going to know that it's an anchor tag. You'll see right there. So we have this nice big section. Now, this is getting little bit lost along the way and that's because we don't have anything in our div here or it's because I forgot to close this call md8 div class here we are that's what's going on my mistake let's go ahead and run that and we'll throw in our buttons right now so a lot of divs a lot of a lot of shit that's just floating around and so now you'll see 
this is a little bit different. So cool, it's where it's basically working right now. Now let's go ahead and add our buttons. Our buttons are going to be similar to our icons, but because they're the main part of the page, we're going to make them a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and jump back in here. And you'll see we have this call MD4. This is where we're going to start adding our buttons. Now we're going to use bootstraps class BTN. Then we have BTN dash default. And then I ended up creating this class called padding BTN. And we have hrefs as well. Go ahead and set that to your correct icon. Let's go ahead and pull up that padding BTN. It is a custom class I created a while back. So where is it? Here we are. So it's going to add some padding to the top and the bottom. We're going to set a, mac, a, a width, and then we're going to add some margin. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and start off uh, in the same order as before. So we're going to do Twitter. And we're going to uh, have our icons as well. Now, if you remember, we got these from Font Awesome. Uh, you can, uh, the link is in the top. All we're gonna do is apply the class fa, fa dash Twitter. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, apply the ID, which we set earlier, um, which is actually really bad that we're using an ID twice. So don't do that. <laughs> Definitely make that a class since we're gonna recall it. Um, that is the better way of doing it. You should not reuse IDs, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and we're gonna do a Twitter icon, which was our CSS that we did in the previous video. Let's go ahead and close that, slash I. And then we're gonna, we're gonna save that. It's gonna run it. We can kind of see what one of those bad boys is gonna look like. So it's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> That is for sure. So let's go ahead and jump back into my class here on my other page and make sure that our padding BTN didn't get distorted anyhow. So I have to say, I was not expecting this long schlong looking thing. <laughs> um, so padding BTNs right here, um, the height Interestingly enough, is something on a whole new level. Hmm, so my padding BTN is correct. So there must be something wrong with how we are testing this. Let's go ahead and look at our code here. We're gonna break it down piece by piece. While we're at it, I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy and paste in the additional ones from before. These, uh, you're gonna do the same exact way, except now you're just using a, you're just gonna repeat it. So let's go ahead and save that and run it. Okay, so all our buttons are being affected like that. Um, little break there. So what was actually going on was, for some reason I, I had these as padding 25%, it's actually padding 5%, but it looks all right if we just go ahead and get rid of it all together. Um, we did add some CSS along the way, but also the issue that we would end up running into, let's go ahead and refresh this page, is you'll see that when we scroll down to the bottom, this is off here. So we actually added some unnecessary padding to the bottom. We should just go ahead and comment that out or delete it. Let me refresh our page here. We have this nice little section like so, and now everything's nice and clean and good to go. Um, that's pretty much it, man. Um, there's not too much else we can do for what the requirement is. You'll see that it's somewhat responsive. Um, now, we could always make it more responsive in future videos and things like that. All you have to do is take that grid column system that we, we started setting it up, and then just go ahead and apply it to various sections. You'll see like this will eventually relocate as well as much as it can. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys found part five and part four uh, helpful. 
maybe eventually a year from now i'll be like the terminator like every 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 10 years arnold does a, a terminator movie but every year i'll do another part to this portfolio we can do it better um but uh maybe maybe in the next video we'll set it up so that this actually becomes the menu icon instead of just getting crunched like that because that doesn't look too good and we'll do the same thing here um but look forward to that in part six if i ever get around to doing it but as always guys thanks for watching I appreciate uh, the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. And a thank you to our sponsors, Savvy and the Full Stack Course, which you can get those things in the description. Thank you to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. If you can, it is appreciated. I work hard on this channel, and uh, I hope uh, it, it, you learn from it as well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.